Hello, my name is Austin Leibel, and I am a trainer for Pragmatic Works, and we do training on many different items for the Microsoft platform, including the newest hot thing around Microsoft Data Analytics, Engineering, and Science, which is Microsoft Fabric. So in this new video series, I want to walk you through how to go through and start working inside of Fabric Notebooks with PySpark. Now, what is a Fabric Notebook and what is PySpark? We'll answer some of those questions during this video. But to begin with, if you would like to follow along with me, what you are going to need is a Fabric trial license or an actual Fabric license. You are going to need a Fabric enabled workspace. You can see that I am currently in one right now. I'm in one called Spark up here in the top left corner of my screen. And what we're going to do here is we are going to first have an area where where we can interact with Spark and have some data stored inside of this workspace as a part of our one lake architecture inside of Fabric. So what we are going to need to do to interact with that is develop and create our first lake house for this workspace. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of a lake house, it's essentially this dimensional data warehouse that is built upon a data lake. Now, if you want more information beyond that, you can go and watch one of our Learn with the Nerd sessions on Fabric either the end-to-end -end solutions or the data engineering in Fabric, where we talk a little bit about Spark and lake houses there. Now, what you would need to do to create your first lake house is go to the bottom left-hand side of your screen and click on this Power BI symbol. And this is going to open up the Persona Switcher. With the Persona Switcher, you can go to the Data Engineering Persona, which is where you are going to be able to create a lake house. So you will see this symbol right here that shows a lake house. I just need for you to click that one single time. It is going to give you a prompt to open up a new lake house. And I'm going to call this one LH, stands for lake house, underscore spark. I'm going to go ahead and create this. Oh, the name is in use. So let me try a different one. I'm going to name it uh, lake house. How about pie spark? Let's go ahead and create this one. And that seems like it's a nice uh, a, a, a name for it. So what we're going to do in this is we need to work with a little bit of sample data. Now we're gonna do a couple of different things, but just as a nice introduction and dipping our toe into what we can do with Spark Notebooks, I want to go and upload a file into the files folder of this lake house. So what I would need to do is go to my get data inside of the lake house as a part of my home ribbon here and click on the drop down and then from there you can select the upload files button now if you're saying Austin I don't have the data you're working with what you can do is you can go and click in the about section for this video and there should be a link to download the class files and the files you are going to need for this specific video there should be inside of that a CSV file or comma separated value file that you can work with and interact with to follow along with me during this session and if we have any other future ones in future videos you will have the class files to go with that as well so what you can do is go inside the upload files button here and click on this folder icon that should open up your file explorer so I'm gonna go and navigate really quickly to where my files are and the one that we're going to use today is called the holiday file so holiday CSV file you probably only have one inside of your class files but go ahead and open that up holiday.csv and we're going to upload it to the files folder of our lake house now this is essentially just creating a file of any type on our one lake and we can access it through this lake house user interface so my upload has been completed it's a rather small file probably about 300 records or so at most so i'm going to close down this in a uh, little uh, window there and i'm going to go click on the files folder so by clicking one single time upon that it's going to show me all of the files that exist inside of this lake house and I have this holiday CSV here now I can do a single click on it and I can actually see some of the data that exists inside of it and give me like a sample of what exists here it's just a preview uh, but if I wanted to actually be able to interact with this in like a table one of the very easy things you can do is drag and drop this file onto the tables folder of your lake house and it's going to automatically provision a table for you so I'm going to go through and cover over my holiday CSV, 
click, drag and drop it over my tables. It's going to prompt me with to create a name for this. And then it's gonna ask me a couple of questions that are about the metadata information, including the column names and the separator for myself. Now this is a CSV comma separated value file. So that's the one we want to select. So go ahead and choose the load option once you have that ready to go. And this will give us some data to work with. Now we'll do a couple of things and ultimately we'll interact with both the files in the lake house as well as the tables. But I wanna make sure we have a couple of things we can work with just to start off this conversation. Now, ultimately what's happening behind the scenes right now is actually a Spark operation. If we were to go over to the monitoring hub, we can see that we use Spark. Now, he keeps saying Spark and talk about PySpark, but what is Spark? So Spark is a massive parallel processing computing network that allows you to store your data in memory using clusters of computers. We call those things Spark clusters. It essentially means that you're using lots of computers or lots of compute in Azure, in one of your cloud providers to be able to go through and do some sort of work against big data scenarios. Now, just because you, I mentioned big data doesn't mean that you have to have big data to work with Spark, but it is usually one of the major use cases for why you would want to work with Spark is because your data load is just too big to work with traditional operations. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a fabric notebook. Now, inside of our lake house, we actually have a very simple way to go through and interact with a notebook. You can see there is actually an an option for that right here. So I'm going to go and select the open notebook option. I'm going to create a new notebook and that is going to take me to a new user interface where I can actually go and start working with some PySpark operations. Now what you will note here is that I have a lake house. It's my LH PySpark lake house, the one that was directly tied and I pulled this notebook from. And you can ultimately integrate any lake house with any notebook, but you can only specifically tie one at a time. Time. You can reference other lake houses that are in other workspaces if necessary, but you would just have to have the endpoint, the, the, the way to actually connect with that. So we'll talk about that in a future video. So to begin with, this is my user interface. On the left hand side here, you can see again, I have my lake houses. I can view my different tables that are there, the holiday table. I can also go and click on the files and by doing so, it opens up another window that shows all the files that exist as a part of this lake house. If I go and click on this table, and expand the column names. I can see the data types and what those column names are. I can select this option right here to load the data to Spark, rename it, delete it, or copy out the path. And that's kind of what is integrated already into that LH PySpark Lakehouse. Now up here in the top, you have my ribbon. So you got your home ribbon where you can go through and see the language that you're currently working in, the environment that you're currently working with, the ability to save or run a notebook as necessary or open it up in VS Code. There's other images or excuse me, ribbons like the edit, the run, the data, and the view ribbon, but we're just gonna stay in the home ribbon for right now. Now, the majority of my screen is taken up right here, and this is where we're actually going to go and develop Spark Notebook cells, live cells that contain live code that can be executed and run. Now, you can both have live cells or something called a markdown cell. So this right now shows some commented out code in a live cell. If I come over to this live cell and click on this M icon right here, it will convert it to a markdown cell and will give me some image and some static text about what you are supposed to do here. Now, if I wanted to convert that back to a, let's say a, a live code cell, I would just need to click this icon right here and it would convert that back. I'm actually gonna leave it as a markdown cell for now, just so we have a, a something uh, to start out with in this notebook. Book. Welcome to your new notebook. Welcome. Type in here if you want to start adding code. Now we're not going to add code here. I can go in and add additional items to this markdown cells, or I can change what type of formatting or H2, H1 headers that I'm currently using. By double clicking on this here, you're able to open that user interface up. By clicking outside of it, you're able to close it back down. Now, if you come down to the bottom of this little blue icon right here, you'll notice, and I actually did it a little too quick there, if you hover this over this right here, you can add new code cells or markdown cells as you see fit. So what I wanna do right now is add in a new code cell. So by clicking on the plus code option, this adds in a blank code cell. 
Now you will notice on the right hand side here that this is currently a code cell that is configured to receive PySpark. You can change the language, the default language of your notebook by going up to the language icon underneath the home ribbon and the languages you have available to you in any Fabric notebook is going to be PySpark, which is Python for Spark, Scala, which is the native language of Spark, Spark SQL, which is different than traditional T SQL that's used for the dialect of SQL Server, and Spark R, which would be R for Spark. Now, of course, this video series is going to revolve around PySpark, but we might go back and forth here and there on working with some of the other languages as necessary. So because this is a PySpark cell, it doesn't mean that I'm constricted and can only use that. I can actually change my language for one notebook. We'll talk about that later with something we call the magic command. So what I want to do right now to display how we can start working with PySpark very, very easily inside of this Fabric notebook is I want to make a connection to my holiday table in my lake house. Now you might be saying, okay, well, we need to create something called a data frame then, right? And you are correct. A data frame is how we are going to contain our cell in memory in a Spark notebook. Now, whenever I go through and I have this lake house connected, it does not mean the data is currently in memory. What I'm going to have to do is configure with code a way to actually make that connection. So I'm going to do this with a very simple method by clicking on the holiday and drag and dropping it over into this code cell here. And by releasing that there, it actually will give me the code for how to go through and use a data frame created by PySpark using some spark.sql functions to it's essentially going to select star from my entire table here. It's going to limit it to 1000 records. So this is like a little bit of SQL working with a little bit of Python. This is the nature by default of what you're going to do to be able to create this data frame. Now, just because I pulled this live code into my notebook still does not actually mean I have a data frame. I have the code that can give me a data frame, but in order to actually go through and start working with data and working with Spark, I need to actually run one of these live code cells. So you can either do that currently by clicking on the run all button, which would run this cell and any others that exist in this notebook, or by coming here and clicking on this one cell icon here to run this. So that's what I'm gonna do to start off. Now what is actually happening in the background right now is I am sending a request through Microsoft Fabric to Azure to request a Spark session. Now this can take anywhere between 30 seconds to two minutes. So I might have to pause the video here for a moment and let this run in the background. But essentially what's going to happen is it's going to make a connection with Apache Spark, give me that connection. Once I have that compute available to me, it's going to then run my operation, which it already did very, very quick, 19 seconds to do that. That is awesome. And now I have some data that I can actually work with. And these are my ways I can go through and have my data displayed. So you've already gone through and you have started writing by Spark. Now you haven't written anything yet. You've just dragged and dropped, but we're going to continue on and keep working with this as we see fit throughout the rest of this. So we now have something called a data frame. The data frame was run and created by using a Spark operation that's going to use the SQL function and it's going to allow me to execute that using a select star statement. Now you can see that the output of my Python code cell is essentially these tabular results that are coming from my holiday table that again came from that file. So very, very quickly we've gone through, we've taken a CSV file, we've converted it to a Delta table on our lake house and we are querying that with PySpark. So that's awesome. Maybe you've already done a couple of new things that you never thought you'd be doing before. Now this output here, you can see these results. You can see they are limited to about a thousand records here. There's even less than that on this table. We're working with very, very sample data right now, but ultimately you can use this to see the output. Now, if you don't want the output to be displayed there anymore, you can actually remove the cell output by going to this item next to the M and just saying you want to clear the output. And that removes that. Now, what is awesome is we still have our Spark available to us. We still have the ability to work with this data frame as well. It's stored in memory. So we didn't delete this, it's not gone. We can actually go and reference it very easily. So I'm gonna go and create another code cell here and I'm going to reference that data frame. So the way to build out what we call a variable or a data frame in Spark is to call out the name of it, DF, DF stands for data frame, and then have it equal some sort of equation, right? So this is D 
df is equal to this. So now that that df object exists inside of our notebook, we can go through and reference it over and over and over again. So if I want to go through and say I want to reference df and I want to do a dot show function, that is essentially going to be the same thing as a select statement. It's just going to be using a different uh, function essentially, right? Instead of using the SQL function that's going to select, it's going to go through, it's going to take that data from the data frame and it's going to show this now in a Python output. So the outputs do look a little different, right? This one looks a little more traditional SQL. This one does and will be how we display many of our different data frames using PySpark. So it has kind of the lines that are built upon it, less GUI, more just traditional text. So you've already gone through and done two different operations. We've shown that we can work with different functions and we're going to keep exploring more as we go throughout this series. But that's going to be where we end this first video. Now, if you like this video and want to know more about what you can do with PySpark, comment below. Tell us what else you want to see, how we can do things, how we can best teach this course, and how we can implement more and more things as you're wanting to learn PySpark yourself, and we can add them to our upcoming videos around this. Now, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications for the Pragmatic Works channel to make sure you can get content as quickly as possible. Like this video with a thumbs up if you thought it was awesome, and if you're interested in learning more about PySpark, Fabric, Azure, Power BI, or anything like that, you can use my code AUSTIN4D0, 4D, to get 40% off of a Pragmatic Works learning subscription for our on-demand learning library. So check that out, use that code, get yourself the best deal on the training as possible. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're ready to learn some more PySpark. I'll see you in the next one.